you to know. I want you to know something. This is sincere. I want you to know when it comes to believing in God, I really tried. I really, really tried. I tried to believe that there is a God who created each of us in his own image and likeness, loves us very much, and keeps a close eye on things. I really tried to believe that, but I got to tell you, the longer you live, the more you look around, the more you realize something is fucked up. Something is wrong here. War, disease, death, destruction, hunger, filth, poverty, torture, crime, corruption, and the ice capades. <laughs> Something is definitely wrong. This is not good work. If this is the best God can do, I am not impressed. Results like these do not belong on the resume of a supreme being. This is the kind of shit you'd expect from an office temp with a bad attitude. <laughs> and just between you and me, in between you and me, in any decently run universe, this guy would have been out on his all-powerful ass a long time ago. <laughs> so, if, if, if there is a God, if there is, I think most reasonable people might agree that he's at least incompetent and maybe, just maybe, doesn't give a shit doesn't give a shit, which I admire in a person and which would explain a lot of these bad results. So rather than be just another mindless religious robot, mindlessly and, and aimlessly and blindly believing that all of this is in the hands of some spooky incompetent father figure who doesn't give a shit, I decided to look around for something else to worship, something I could really count on. And immediately I thought of the sun. Happened like that. Overnight I became a sun worshiper. Well, not overnight, you can't see the sun at night. The first thing the next morning, I became a sun worshiper. Several reasons. First of all, I can see the sun, okay? <laughs> yeah. Unlike some other gods I could mention, I can actually see the sun. I'm big on that. If I can see something, I don't know, kind of helps the credibility along, you know? So every day I can see the sun as it gives me everything I need. Heat, light, food, flowers in the park, reflections on the lake, and occasional skin cancer, but hey, <laughs> at least there are no crucifixions and we're not setting people on fire simply because they don't agree with us. Sun worship is fairly simple. There's no mystery, no miracles, no pageantry, no one asks for money, there are no songs to learn, and we don't have a special building where we all gather once a week to compare clothing. And the best thing, the best thing about the sun, it never tells me I'm unworthy. It doesn't tell me I'm a bad person who needs to be saved. Hadn't said an unkind word. Treats me fine. So, I worship the sun. Daytime, the time during which the sun gives light to the earth. From day to day, without certainty or continuance. Today on this day. Astronomical day, the day which begins at noon and ends at noon. Civil day, the mean solar day of 24 hours, being that in ordinary use, and divided into two series, each from 1 to 12. Jewish day, the period from sunset to sunset. Sidereal day, the day measured by the stars, being the interval between two successive transits of a star, for convenience the first point of Aries, over the same meridian. Solar day, the day measured by the sun, being the interval between two successive transits of the sun's center over the same meridian. Mean solar day the mean or average of all the apparent solar days in the year. To win the day, to gain the victory, to be successful. Note, day may have been nothing more, primarily, than the name of the sun god, naturally extended to the space of time during which he exerted his power, and could be worshipped. Hence identical with the name for a god common in the Aryan languages, we have Greek, Theos, Latin, Deus, Gaelic, Dia, French, Dieu, Italian, Deus, Spanish, Dios, God, Latin, Dies, De also Divum, the sky, from the root Div, to shine. Dia, is a term which under modified forms Deus, Theos, Zeus, Dios, Dio, Dieu, Jove, the Indo-Europeans apply to the supreme lord of heaven and earth. The sun's light is regarded by them as the symbol of God. sub Dieu means either in the open day, or under God. The Celtic races, regarding the sun light as the sign of God's majestic presence, 
called the day by the same name as that by which they styled the supreme being himself, Dia. The name of day, Dia, and the name of God, Dia, are alike in Irish Gaelic. In Latin, which is a cousin of Gaelic, the names of God and of day differ very little dies, day, Deus, God. Mr. Burgess satisfactorily derives the name of Jupiter from, Deus Pater, but then he observes, that he was called Deus Pater, not because he was Dea Pater, father of the day, but because he was Deus or Dius Pater, God the Father, for anciently Dius signified not only a God, but also Day, whence Du and Subdio, and thus Dies, Day, signified also God, for on comparing the etymologies, not those commonly received, of Deus, Eos, Divus, Dives, Deus, Dies, Dis, it appears that the names of Dies and Deus were originally synonymous, and that the name of God was denominated from Day, or the Sun. Thus, there is a long list of words which our Christian parrots prattle forth, of which they have never dreamed, or thought more of the meaning and significance than a parrot, and which have been adopted and naturalized without ever being translated. I need not mention the Amen, and Hallelujah, and Hosanna, and Glory, and Sanctification, and Holiness, of the derivative meaning of which a horse is not more ignorant than a Christian, but our words God and the Son, are really the one a uh, Hebrew, the other an old Coptic word, both signifying the same thing, but both alike adopted without being inquired into, and naturalized without being understood. God, or Gad, being the never translated name in the ancient Tsabaism, or star worship of the constellation of the Ram, or Lamb of God, as I have explained to you, the Rama, the Great, the Elevated, that is the first of the signs of the Zodiac, that is by metonymy of the Sun, in that sign Aries, the Ram or Lamb of God, whose astronomical name, Is, is the root of Jesus, the Lamb of God, as our English words, Sun and Day, are found in the first primitives, not of a particular language, but of the most ancient and universal ever uttered by man. San, pronounced San, Zon, Sun, and Sun, that is, with every vowel, and every mode of uttering the initial, that the tongue could compass like Gad, Gid, Ged, God, and Gut, was, like that word the common Ammonian name, for the sun. While those who reckoned the year is the beginning at the vernal equinox, when the sun crosses the line of the equator, and appears in the sign of the Lamb, whose ancient Ammonian name was Gad, which has become our English word, God. While God is invariably Gad of the tribes of Israel that is, the Ram of the signs of the zodiac. The sun, being thus the great central wheel of all recognized power, that is the tabernacle or dwelling place of the supreme, omnipotent God, became the principal object of admiration and adoration. It in fact, pervades the whole system. This declaration is borne out by the fact that nearly every divine epithet, nearly every name applied to the deity in the Christian scriptures, including those addressed to Jesus Christ and also nearly every theological term in both the Old and New Testaments are traceable to the ancient solar worship, that is, the words, when traced to their roots or original form, are found to have been solar titles. We will present some samples by way of proof, the divine title Lord, in the New Testament is translated from the Greek Euros, which is the Persian name for the sun, God is from Gad, an Ammonian name for the sun, Jehovah, by translation and declension, becomes Jupiter, which, according to Macrobius, is the sun itself, deity is from the Latin Deus, which is traceable to Dies, a day, a period of time measured by the sun, Jesus is from Jesoris, with the Latin termination us, which means the one great fire of the sun, and Christ is derived from Chris, a Chaldean term for the sun, and so on of other divine titles. And whole phrases of scripture texts disclose the same idolatrous solar origin. Why is Jesus Christ called the Son of Righteousness? Spelled S-U-N, let it be noticed, as this text, quoted from Malachi, is assumed to apply to him, and why is the term light, so frequently used and preferred throughout the Christian scriptures, to denote the spiritual condition of man? Why are nations, whose minds are cultivated and stored with knowledge, 
said to be enlightened. Certainly, to our external vision, they are as opaque as the most grossly ignorant barbarians. But they are called enlightened when advanced in knowledge, simply because all knowledge was once supposed to be imparted by the God of the Sun through its descending rays of light. Hence light and knowledge are now synonymous terms. David says, The Lord is my light and my salvation, just what the ancient pagans used to say of the sun. Isaiah says, The Lord shall be to thee an everlasting light, exactly such a conception as the ancient he then entertained of the sun, to which its application is more obviously appropriate. Habakkuk says, His brightness was as light, apply this language to the sun, and its meaning becomes strikingly significant. Christ is said to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, the true light, the light of the world, and so forth, and yet we cannot discover that those who have embraced his doctrines, and thus come into possession of this true light, shed any more light upon a devious pathway, traveled in the darkness of night, than the various Jewish Pharisee or infidel. The Christian reader will reply, these phrases are mere figures of speech. To be sure they are, we admit it but then their derivation and origin are nonetheless obvious, and, when scrutinizingly examined, disclose remote traces of oriental idolatry, and, moreover, they most unmistakably prove Christianity to be of heathen extraction with respect to its verbal habiliments, or external vestment, as well as the main drift and scope of its doctrines and teachings, as shown elsewhere. We will observe further, that such conceptions, found in the Christian Bible, as God is a consuming fire, God is light, and so forth, originated in the primeval ages, when God was supposed to reside in the sun, also such ejaculations as O Lord, the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. The words light, brightness, and rising apply with striking force to the sun, and were used by the ancient Persians in such a relation, while, on the other hand, it is difficult to discover any sense or appropriateness in applying them, at least the word rising to the Supreme Being, for he is represented as always occupying the highest heavens, so there can be no higher point to rise to. We might also ask, why are the Lord's Day and Sunday used as synonymous terms? Or why is the Lord now worshipped on the very day anciently set apart for the worship of the sun or solar deities? Do not these facts prove that many remnants of the ancient idolatrous religions are still retained in Christian theology?